Now, it may look a bit intimidating, especially because um, I've asked Shayan just to give us the bare bones of the question. So there's not much context around this. You're just like, what, what does this even mean? Okay. So up here, you've got sort of notation overload. You have a function, hence the name, but we define it in different ways for different values of x. So usually you're used to something like this, which means that, let's, let's do this. No matter what x you throw in, you only have to interpret that value of x or evaluate it for a single function. That's what this function is all the time. That's kind of what's implied. But here, this is like a function that kind of changes its clothes every now and then, depending on the time of day. Um, so it's like a bride at a Chinese wedding. Um, you can see for these values of x, this is what you're going to do. For these values of x, this is what you're going to do, and so on. Okay, so you actually have to kind of read it in reverse, from right to left. You have a look at the value you're interested in, you go to the appropriate spot, and then you evaluate whatever function is related to that. Okay, so the first one, the first question just says, what is f of 2? What is f of 2? So like I mentioned before, you've got to start from the right hand side and have a look at which one of these domains does your chosen value fall into. Okay, so just be careful because if you look closely, you'll see that you've got these boundaries. Sometimes you count a battery and sometimes you don't. Um, and so you can see 2 is going to fall into this bottom one. Do you see how that's included or is it excluded in this one above? So you can't just look for the number. Um, you've also got to look for which way does my boundary go. Okay. So being that it is in this part, I'm going to evaluate this function for this value. So I'm going to just do the substitution. This is 8 minus 2 squared, which is 8 minus 4, which is 4. Okay. Um, by the way, don't skip that step. It's, I know, very simple numerically, but what it shows is I can see where this has come from. I can see that it's, um, you're actually evaluating this and you're doing a substitution. Even if it's just simple numbers, it demonstrates understanding. OK, so the next question is sketch. Now, once you've got this underway, you then want to piece together what does the rest of it look like? Uh, being that I already did this last one, I might as well start by having a look at this bit first. So I'm doing everything in reverse at the moment. So here's my set of axes. I don't know anything about what this is going to look like yet. But I can see <clears throat> that for this little portion over here, so from here to 3 up to 4, and that's where it ends. It doesn't keep on going forever. This is the graph that I want, 8 minus x squared. Just picture 8 minus x squared for a second. Forget about the rest of it. Just imagine what 8 minus x squared would look like if that was the only thing you drew here. What can you tell me about the shape? Yeah, Russell. Yep, yeah, good. So parabola, it's concave down, it's facing downwards. Um, and it's been shifted. Which direction has it been shifted in? Yeah, up eight units. So you can sort of picture it here. Do you, have you got the picture sort of in your mind? But of course, you're not going to draw the whole thing. You're not going to draw the whole thing. You're only going to draw this bit. Okay. Now, remember, I'm sort of tracing out this shape like so. Where is it going to begin? It'll begin at x equals 2, somewhere over here. And I've got a y value for that. Do you see that? So I'm going to mark that in. If I go x equals 2, 1, 2, and I'm going to go y equals 4, so 1, 2, 3, 4. I'm going to put a filled circle here because I know that's where I begin. Okay. I don't do anything to the left because that is not within this domain. I go a little bit to the right. So now I don't know, want to know where does this end. When x is equal to 4, what will f of x be equal to? What's f of 4? Have a look. It'll be 8 minus 4 squared, 8 minus 4 squared, which is 8 take away 16. So it's going to be all the way down here at negative 8. Does that make sense? So I'm actually going to need to change my scale a little bit because I don't have enough space. Let's make this 4. So that's negative 2, negative 4, negative 8, negative 16. You OK with that? See how I'm piecing things together? So that's at x equals 4. OK, how's it look so far? That's all right? Now, I see that from here to here, remember you had the general shape in your mind. Clearly, I'm going to pass through the x-axis, so I probably want to find that intercept. How do I do that? I'm going to let y equal 0 down here. Yeah. Uh, and when you let y equal 0 for this guy, 
you get x squared equals 8. Do you notice that? So if x squared is 8, then x is the square root of 8. What is the square root of 8? Roughly, anyway. Is it between 2 and 3 or 3 and 4? It's between 2 and 3, right? Because this is uh, root 4 and this is root 9. Root 8 must be somewhere in here. So I'm just going to draw it roughly like so and call that root 8. How are you handling so far? Okay. This is just a bit of a parabola, but we're so used to drawing an entire parabola that you have to do a bit of extra thinking to make sure you work out what's going on. By the way, uh, what have we got down here? Negative 16. Is that what I said? I want negative 8, didn't I? I was counting the wrong way. It's in the right spot. Um, I put a filled circle down here. Why did I put a filled circle there? Good. You can look and you can see the boundary. That one's included, right? doesn't have to be. I could have been asked to draw that, in which case there would have been a hollow circle over there. But I was asked to draw this. So far, so good. So we've done one portion. In fact, when I go through this question, um, I like to tick off little portions here and there so I know what's going on. Now I'm over to this portion. I'm just going to go from right to left to keep going. So from negative 1 to 2, this is what the graph looks like. From negative 1 to 2. Hmm. So again, just like here, I'm going to think about where I start and where I end. Where I start and where I end. So when x is equal to negative 1, what is the function equal to? What is f of negative 1? Uh, so this is a bit of a trick question, isn't it? Um, because when f is equal to negative 1, I'm actually not even in this domain. Do you see that? I'm in this one. But I would be, if I could evaluate that, I would be at y equals negative 1. So I'm going to put a hollow circle there because I'm not actually there. Does that make sense? So what do we say? This is negative 2, so negative 1 would be around here. There's my hollow circle. Okay, are you alright with that? That's negative 1. Sorry my scales are different, but that way I can fit all my numbers on. Okay, so that's where I begin. And then I'm going to go up like y equals x would expect you to. And where am I going to end? What coordinates will I end at? At 2 comma 2, right? 2 comma 2. Uh, there's x equals 2 and y equals 2. And as you predict, you're going right through, sorry, forgive my terrible graph there. Um, you're passing right through the origin, okay? Because it's y equals x, yeah? You'll use a ruler and make that look better than mine. Last portion over here, middle portion. I've got the one on the left. It looks weird, but that's because it's defined in all these kinds of different ways. So now, tick that guy off, I'm um, to the last one. x squared minus 1. Forget about the rest of it for a second. Do you have a picture of x squared minus 1? in your mind, you know what it looks like. It's a concave up parabola and it's been shifted down a unit. So it's sort of like, a, like this, right? It begins at x equals, well sort of here, at x equals negative 1. What will this guy be equal to when x is negative 1? 0. I'm going to put a filled circle there. And then how far do I need to go? It doesn't go forever, does it? It goes all the way up to negative 4. So when x equals negative 4, what I put into here will be negative 4 all squared, which is 16, take away 1, which is 15. OK, where's 15 going to be? Huh, OK, 8. I think I'm going to be about here, I'd say. So negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. Oh, that's filled. What do you think? If I completed the rest of the parabola, you can see where it belongs. So I've got my coordinates here and <laughs> there. Done. So it's a strange beast, but that's sort of exactly what you expect because look, it just keeps on changing. It's worse than Jekyll and Hyde. It's like three different things all at different times. So none of these have anything to do with each other, and that's why you have all these weird discontinuities here in the middle. Okay. But remember, think about how I went through this step by step. I look at the domain, and then I think about what does this graph look like? Where does it start and where does it end? 